Okay, I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, do a uh, basic 100 hour service oil change on a four stroke outboard. Uh, I'm doing mine on a Yamaha 200 horsepower. Um, whichever brand you have, it's all the same basically. You just need brand specific parts. And uh, you don't actually need factory parts. Um, you can use off brand uh, replacement parts like by West Marine has Sierra filters and um, they work great. You can just look up what, which filter your boat uses, match it to the Sierra brand one that West Marine has, and you're good. Um, I'm also going to be changing my fuel filter cartridge, and I just went ahead and got the Yamaha one with that. And then uh, once a year, I'll change out my fuel water separator filter, and this is do it. I do it every April. Um, you're going to need oil filter wrenches to get those filters off. Um, I use a smaller one for the oil filter and a fuel separator needs a bigger one so you have to get a specific filter wrench to do that. Uh, West Marine has these for like 18 bucks or something. You're going to need oil. I use a 10W30. Again West Marine brand works great for me. It's uh, about 20 bucks a gallon. They had it on sale for 20% off. Uh, my motor takes six quarts so I just buy two gallons. I basically use three gallons every two uh, services. Um, you're obviously going to need a funnel and something to catch your extra oil in so you're not making a mess. Speaking of a mess, you're going to want to get some gloves. I just picked up these at uh, Harbor Freight, like 10 bucks for a box. Get the heavy duty ones. You need some rags and uh, a piece of cardboard to put under it to uh, clean up the mess. There's two ways to get the oil out of the boat. You can take the whole thing apart, drain it. You have to take the sides off the cowling of the motor and everything else. Or you can pick up a pump like this. This is a vacuum pump, oil change pump, high speed. You basically pump it, it creates a vacuum. This gets stuff down into the uh, dipstick hole and it'll suck all the oil out real easy, no problem. If you service your motor regularly, you're not having any problems, you're fine doing this. It gets almost all the oil out. So that's basically it. You got your tools. Um, oh, finally, I get this uh, Bose Shield T9. Uh, after I'm done servicing my motor, I spray all the parts underneath the cowling with this to keep salt from intruding into the stuff. You can spray this on wiring, plastic, anything. I basically just make sure the motor is clean. If there's any salt built up, I'll rinse it off and then let it dry and spray this everywhere. All right, so I'm going to be uh, showing you how to take the oil out of the boat. This is the dipstick. I already removed it from the uh, dipstick hole there. I have my pump. Take the cap off. I'm going to feed that into the thing as far as it'll go, which will get to the bottom of the oil pan. And the basically way this pump works is it's a suction pump, so I'm going to pump it. About 20 times to get the suction going. And as you can see, the oil is already running down into the, uh, into the pump here. So this takes a little bit of time. But, um, yeah, in the meantime, so when you fill up your, uh, well, there's not really any marking on here to show exactly what the uh, right amount of oil is, but there's these two holes, one here and one here. And ideally, your oil should stay between those two. So I usually fill it just a little bit past half on there. That'll give you about six quarts. So this is pretty easy. This will just keep pumping oil out until it runs out of suction or until there's no more oil. And you can tell there's no more oil because this line will start to be clear as opposed to uh, black. If it's, if it's black and there's nothing going in, then you need to uh, pump it a few more times. Okay, while I'm uh, draining the oil out of the motor, it's time for me to change my oil filter. On my motor, it's located on this side here. I use this uh, tool that I picked up online. It just grabs the thing and uses the regular socket wrench to, uh, to tension it and take it off. It's a lot easier than the, than the metal strap ones. Uh, I already loosened this up, so we'll dig into the filter. If, it, if you're damaging the filter, it's not a problem. It's going to trash anyway. Um, and for tightening, you're just going to hand tighten it. But a lot of times, while you're use, you know while you're running your motor, it'll really tighten up. This one was really tight. Basically, just apply that there and twist and ratchet it off. Um, motor. Filter's a little bit dirty from uh, 
because uh, the thing's not completely empty. So I have this this tray I have here that I'm going to put it in. I'm going to take a little bit of the oil here. It doesn't matter if it's old oil or new oil, and I'm going to go over the O-ring of the new filter. And you want to make sure that the filter is the same exact number there as the one you're taking off. You know, sometimes it can get confusing or one might be boxed wrong, but I always double check that. Then it's simple as just putting it on, lining up the, the threads, and screwing it on there hand tight. That's really all you have to do, and your oil filter is changed out and ready to go. I got a couple more minutes uh, for the oil to drain out of here. Um, one of the things I might not have mentioned is I run the motor for a few minutes before I take the oil out because it will heat the oil up and make it flow easier and easier to get out. Okay, so I've got all the oil out. And um, I've got my dipstick back in. I've got my oil filter on. Now I'm going to take off the oil cap on the top here. Put on a rag. It's got a little bit of oil on it. Put my funnel in. I'm going to start with a full gallon. I have a full gallon. I have a half gallon. I'm going to slowly pour this in. You don't need to really be careful in the beginning because it's going to take a gallon and a half. is not to be sloppy with it. Alright, so that's a gallon. I have about a half gallon left over from my last fill up. A little bit over a half gallon here. So I pour this more slowly. I'm only trying to put about two quarts in here. Get there. I'm gonna go check it. So let's settle in. I'm gonna check it on the uh, dipstick. Okay. Uh, the final step is replacing the fuel filter. Um, this is the assembly. It's attached to the motor with this. It, it's tough to get it off. So you have to have a. You have to be able to grab onto this and twist it free. Um, mine was really stuck on there pretty good. I use a, a pair of uh, channel locks to get me a better grip. You gotta be really careful because it's made out of plastic though. Once you unscrew it. There's going to be fuel in here. I already dumped the fuel out into a can. And now I just use this to take the old filter out. I get the new filter. And I just put it in the same way the other one came out. Now you can see these two filters look pretty different. So that's caught a lot of stuff that uh, you wouldn't want going into your motor. So it's good to change this every 100 hours or so. So you just Put this back in and mount it up. Screw it back on. Hand tighten it. Now I'm not going to show you how to do the one, uh, the fuel water separator because that's below deck, so I wouldn't be able to do it. It's basically the same thing. Unscrew it with the filter wrench. Be careful not to dump all the gas out of it. Maybe have a bucket down there or something to put it in, and then just finger tighten a new one on there. So I'm going to remount this uh, to the motor using the parts, and that is pretty much the end of the 100-hour service.